From a barren wasteland filled with bandits, desperation, and violence, to a thriving oasis full of prosperity, hope, and peace. This is a real story of community-led water cycle restoration. How generations of landscape abuse and violence can be reversed by the people living there. When you hear the word security, what thoughts come to mind? Social stability, economic opportunity, a healthy environment, peace? There are so many factors that contribute to our sense of security, but there's one element that lies underneath it all, without which we swiftly perish. Water brings life to everything it touches. Each drop holds the potential to nourish, to heal, to give life. From the combination of water and soil, a whole new world springs automatically. Without water, there is no life. And without water, there can be no peace. Water insecurity and drought are rapidly spreading around the world. Globally, despite our technological achievements, water crises and conflict are becoming ever more common and severe. Currently, half the world's population experiences water insecurity, and it's getting worse with each passing year. Our neglect has led to a multitude of crises, threatening our homes, our loved ones, our landscapes, and even our survival. Without water, there's no viable future on a landscape. Communities begin to suffer and eventually flee in search of a better life, becoming refugees. People are radicalized and whole regions can fall into violence. This process has led to the untold suffering of millions and far too many heart-wrenching humanitarian crises to name. We stand at a precipice, watching as the veins of our planet wither and die. Even those not yet directly experiencing water scarcity are still affected by flood, drought, wildfire, and the resulting damages and loss. This vicious feedback loop is called the watershed death spiral, but fortunately, it's reversible. This was exactly the situation in the Chambal River watershed of India. Desertification, drought, and water scarcity led to agricultural collapse and economic hardship. The young people migrated to the cities in search of work. Some of the people who remained turned to desperate measures to survive. The area became known for its bandits, with the government even declaring it a lawless region. Their land and their way of life was dying, and with it, their hope. Then, hearing of the successes in a neighboring village with the waterman of India, Dr. Rajendra Singh, they decided to rewrite their story. So you don't do the treatment of humankind. You treat it to the earth. Because this earth, nobody treats it today. If earth is sick, so nobody healthy. So if you are treated to the earth, earth treat to us and make healthy. They started to implement indigenous knowledge and traditional water holding structures to store the seasonal rains in the earth. Unlike large centralized dams and reservoirs, these small, simple structures can be implemented by local people. They are decentralized, holding water throughout the landscape, rehydrating earth rather than just holding water. The water bodies they built recharged the groundwater 
and refilled their wells. The tributaries started to flow and the Chambal River even became perennial once again. As a result, the villagers could now grow crops to provide for their families. Young people suddenly had economic opportunities in their homelands and were able to return. Mothers and daughters who previously had to carry water all day were now able to go to school and earn a living. Even the once violent bandits turned in their guns and asked for forgiveness. They were now peaceful farmers. This community-led water cycle restoration brought about social stability, but also something even more important, hope for the future. The once desperate and desolate landscape and peoples were rejuvenated to health and prosperity. Hope flows like a river reborn. As people see the positive impacts of their work, their actions grow and spread to their neighbors. We can breathe life back into our landscapes and communities by storing the seasonal rains in the earth. This recharges springs, waterways, and aquifers with each passing rain. The rehydrated land supports more plant life as a result providing cooling and moisture through photosynthesis. Over time, on a big enough scale, this has been shown to recharge wells and water supplies, revive rivers, and even reduce local temperatures. In Rajasthan, these efforts brought water back to more than 250,000 wells and rejuvenated nine rivers. They reversed decades of drought and despair while providing a model for social and ecological renewal around the world. These decentralized community-led water projects rehydrated the landscape without the aid of any governments or NGOs. They positively impacted the lives of more than a million people at a tiny fraction the cost of conventional methods. By working with nature, decades of destruction can be repaired in a handful of years. The more water that rehydrates land, the more life that land can support. A once violent and dangerous place became peaceful and prosperous. The difference? They rehydrated their landscape. They brought water back to their lands. Imagine that for a second. It's not only possible, it's already been done. And by some of the most humble people in the world. We have just nine inches rains in annual rain in Rajasthan. So if we done in Rajasthan, why not this work can done in everywhere? This is something that each one of us can do. Globally, humanity spends more than $2 trillion every year on our militaries under the guise of security. And yet somehow the threats keep multiplying. If we truly value our security and peace, we need to focus our efforts on water. Find the courage to act, for your actions create the ripple effects that turn into waves of change. Share this message. Join us at Water Stories. This is just one story of many of humans accomplishing incredible feats to create a better common future. If you do something for water, water gives to everything for us. Water can flow and it can crash. 
Nothing in the world is as soft and yielding, and yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. <laughs>